Welcome to the show, guys. Hey there, business owners, directors, and marketeers. In today's show, I'm meeting Dan Reich from Troops. Uh, I'm Lucas, your host as always, and I want to tell you a little bit about Dan before we're starting with the interview. So he's the co-founder and CEO of Troops, which is a venture-backed technology company that is building intelligent software to help millions of people to combine data about the customers and relationships to empower them with critical information and actions so that they can make more money and grow faster. The last piece sounds really good, definitely. <laughs> Troops is working with hundreds of companies and has raised about uh, 22 million in venture capital from first round capital, Slack and others. So uh, a, lit <clears throat> a big backup there. And he's actually also, he's not the only company he's been building up. He's also co-founder and president of Tula, which is a health and beauty business that he's created um, in the past. So he's been involved in a lot of startups and companies before has that have raised over $100 million in revenue to uh, in, in venture capital uh, and have exited for uh, about over a billion, actually. So super, super experienced guy I'm talking today. Um, and uh, so then welcome to the show. Thanks, Lucas. Excited to be here. Very cool. So tell me about Troops. What is it all about? Yeah, so at Troops, simply we want to make work human. Um, if you think about any business on earth, a business needs to make strategic decisions, drive sales processes, collaborate on big deals, and in general, keep everyone informed so that they can deliver for their customers and win. Mm -hmm. um, but you really can't do that if your information isn't in your CRM. And the solution definitely isn't to pester your reps. Your CRM has information, your people have intelligence, and so at Troops, we connect them. We bring mission-critical information from your CRM ecosystem like Salesforce into that medium where people are spending most time at work um, in systems like enterprise messaging interfaces like Slack. In mm -hmm. fact, our view is mess messaging enterprise systems like Slack are becoming the new operating systems for teams. And so in the future, we think that the teams are gonna be most effective, are gonna be highly collaborative, and work, again, in a way that's incredibly easy and human. Very cool. Interesting, so is that specifically then sales teams uh, using it, or is that also across other types of the other teams in the company? Great question. So when we talk about CRM, we also, we, all, we often do indeed talk about sales, but the reality is your CRM is a database that underpins and powers your entire company. And so it's not just sales that relies on that information, nor is it just sales that uses it. It's really the whole company. Sales, account management, customer success, your management team, your executive team, your legal team, your operations team. So we are in fact working with companies across the organization. We just start and lead with sales because uh, if we can make the life of a salesperson or sales team more effective, we can much more easily help them drive revenue and growth and make their customers more successful. And if we can do that, then it has a cascading effect to the whole business, which helps the whole business grow, not only just in sales, but other departments. So we think about sales as really the tip of the spear uh, and where we're focused on primarily creating value, but certainly not limited to sales. Makes total sense. Could you give me one or two concrete examples on how a sales rep would be supported through troops? What would be sort of the, the extra benefit that they would be getting when working with the tool? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you a real example. You mentioned Slack. Um, you know, they're, they're one of our investors as well as a customer. Um, and we help their sales team uh, among many things. One very specifically is to stay on top of important next steps and tasks. In fact, we do this with many sales organizations like Slack and Flexport and, and others. But the example is this. Let's say I'm a sales rep and I'm walking in to a meeting or I just had a meeting with um, you know, a big uh, CPG company. Mm -hmm. After that meeting, Troops knows that I had a meeting and will send me a, a notification and say, hey, Lucas, how did that meet meeting with company X go? Um, do you want to log any notes or next steps or update key fields, like who is the decision maker, who is the economic buyer, what's the pain, what are the metrics that are important to them. And as I capture that information in real time, elegantly in this messaging interface, that information has been just stored in your CRM and subsequently it's shared more broadly and publicly with the rest of the organization so they can see what's happening but also engage in real time in conversation and collaboration around that key event because that key event could be a huge catalyst uh, an ROI driver for that deal. And so if you think about doing that for key moments, for key deals times, all of the events and all of the deals in a company's pipeline or customer base, 
uh, over time that compounds in value and really adds up and is really, really meaningful for the business. And that's just one example. We have companies today, uh, that's, just, that's just one business process. We have companies today that are using about over 20,000 different unique business processes, um, consuming billions of data points to, to uh, alert uh, users and also let them take elegant action off of those events. Very, very cool. So, uh, very fun, fascinating product that you guys have been building there. So how would I have to think about somebody discovering and starting troops? What would be a typical user journey or what the, the, are the channels that people find troops through? Yeah, so today I think probably the, the biggest way people hear about us are through word of mouth. Uh, the customers that we work with are just incredible and many of them are huge uh, advocates. And as a result, they share uh, troops with their colleagues and they, their peers about how they are being most effective uh, at their job. In fact, we've, we've, we've looked at data. We have uh, over you know, a dozen folks that have taken troops with them at you know, for three different companies in the past few years, which I think is a testament uh, to the fact that we're helping them do their job. In fact, uh, so much so one of our customers included troops in a job description Uh, for a, a role they were hiring for, and the bullet point said, as a requirement, the, the candidate must know how to use Google and Troops uh, nice. in the same time, which is pretty cool. So today it's primarily word of mouth, and um, we, we think that will change soon. We've recently uh, invested in a more meaningful uh, sales and marketing or organization, so I think in the future you'll begin to hear a little bit more uh, from Troops, and hopefully more people will hear about us uh, more organically. Um, just from the ecosystem. Got you. Could you tell me then which role the, the website plays? Because now here it is a lot of word of mouth. People might be hopping on, on the website from there to you know, fully grasp the concept. Um, what, what role does the website play in the overall mix of winning the clients? The goal of the website is really to act as a place of education for, uh, for most importantly, the problems and benefits and problem solutions and how Troops is uniquely suited to solve those problems and solutions. And so you're going to be seeing us do a whole lot more on our website, including um, more use cases around specific roles. As we just talked about, sales uses Troops, but so does account management, so does customer success, so does executive uh, executives in an organization. So soon you're going to see us talk more about how Troops helps each one of those roles more specifically in addition, you'll soon see you'll soon see us add uh, videos, really short, uh, beautiful videos that highlight how our product works against each one of those use cases and why uh, it's helpful and beneficial in terms of increasing uh, value and revenue. So that's how we think about uh, the website today, and surely it's a work in progress, but you'll see more more there. From gotcha. us. And is there already any types of metrics that you would really care about, or um, that you would hold your marketing team accountable to in regards to the website? Yeah, we think about marketing metrics in a very similar way, I imagine, to most other SaaS companies. So we're looking at your classic metrics like uh, web traffic uh, and inbound uh, traffic and then how that falls through the funnel into uh, leads and qualified leads and uh, demo signups and uh, product signups and how that flows into uh, paying customers as well. So I suspect we look at metrics, again, in a very similar way to most SaaS companies. Got you. And maybe one last question on the website uh, uh, angle there that we're talking about right now. Um, anything that you learned in order to improve the um, signups for a demo or of, a, of um, starting to use the product? Anything, maybe war, a war story to share, which you learned on the, to get more value from the existing traffic with the sign? Yeah, it's funny. You mentioned Tula before, but I think we've, we've learned things that e-commerce sites just know intuitively and have learned for, for years. So some things we've learned are pretty basic and obvious, but things like uh, fewer call to actions is better than more call to actions. If you present a user with too many things to do, there's analysis paralysis and they do nothing. Um, mm -hmm. We've also learned that, surprise, surprise, but SEO is quite important. So <laughs> Often people are looking for very specific problems. They're Googling for those problems. And, and, and equally, they're Googling for uh, what they think are, are solutions. And, um, and so we try to consider and contemplate what those look like and how they live on our website. And uh, yeah, we also think about, um, you know, we also think about video as an important component of the website as well, right? So today, people are used to 
Instagram and Instagram videos and Snapchat and videos on Twitter and TikTok, that's the expectation. In general, we see consumer behavior quickly permeating the enterprise world and uh, video is a part of that too. Got you. And um, is, is, I would be just one last question on it actually as a follow-up. Conversion rate, what, what role would that play? Is that something you closely track at the very moment? Is that something that is going to be getting more important? Would you mention the website to be upgraded there? What role does it play today? Yeah, I would say conversion rate and all of the funnel metrics increasingly will become more important and we'll continue to work to refine them and, and look at each one of them and where drop-off occurs within the funnel. That, that'll that always be important and it'll always be increasingly important as we grow and deal with just larger data sets. Gotcha. Very, very cool. I would like to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about, about you as a, as a founder because I think you have a very, very interesting bio. I was really looking forward to that to that interview. Maybe you could tell me how were you able to get, generate that first 10 customers when you were starting off with the product or the business? Yeah, in the beginning of Troops, uh, me and my co-founders had this crazy idea. And the idea was this. It was, wow, you know, every company on earth uses CRM. But for the past few decades, frankly, since its existence, it's really just been uh, a bunch of fields, forms, buttons, and boxes and we felt like humans should not have to adapt to software, but instead software should adapt to humans. And at the time, six of the top 10 most used apps in the world were messaging apps. And so the question we really asked ourselves was, man, what if, what if using your CRM was easy as texting a friend or texting a buddy, much like we do in our personal life? And so that was really the question we went out to market with and engage in conversations with. Uh, with early early customers, and we focused specifically in the beginning on mobile teams, field sales teams. We felt like if we could prove that messaging is ideal for people in the field on their go, then that behavior is not only ideal for mobile uh, interfaces, but it would also equally be just as good, if not better, on desktop too, because inherently mobile you have constraints. It needs to be fast, easy, and elegant. Uh, so that was the the thesis. And so uh, we went and looked for companies that had characteristically mobile sales teams. And so what we started with really focused on uh, CPG companies and more specifically beauty companies that had field sales teams that were running into retail stores, meeting and engaging with customers that had to keep track of remotely things like when they showed up to a store, when they left, how many customers did they speak with? What were the context and nature of the conversation? And slowly but surely, we realized, wait a minute, you know, this is quite ubiquitous, not just for mobile teams, but just all sales teams in general. And in fact, um, that text message interaction um, was very, very valuable and pervasive. And so the first product was quite literally me and my co-founder as the bot texting with mobile field sales teams as a way to hack the concept to market. And once we proved that, the end users, in fact, love that mode of interaction. We uh, really determined that we had something and it was time to invest real meaningful uh, R&D in making it not just humans as the bots, but like a real uh, technology that, that worked uh, more autonomously uh, without you know, me and my co-founders doing that work. And we did that and got our first uh, customers and that's how we got started. And how did you get in front of them? How, because I'm assuming it's a relatively big switch or change for them when they were not using this type of technology um, alongside their, their CRM. How did you get in front of them in the first place? Good old-fashioned hustle and networking. Uh, so this is the world I grew up in, grew up, grew up in as did my co-founders, just hustling and doing sales. So, um, you know, just a combination of cold outreach and networking and introductions. We were able to get in front of a, uh, quite a lot of folks very, very quickly. Very cool. Yeah, as a very last question to sort of wrapping up that interview, I would like to ask you, if you would have to restart Troops today, what would be one advice that you would give yourself? It's a great question. I was just asked this last week by one of my best friends. I think, I think one of the things maybe, uh, maybe we would do a little bit differently is maybe pull forward sales and marketing a little bit earlier. And the reason is if you think about what we're doing and the problems we're solving. The problems aren't new. Right? Every, virtually every company on earth has issues with their, with their CRM and, and data issues and usage issues and compliance and engagement issues. That is not a new problem. Um, 
But what is new is how we believe companies need to be solving them. We think the wrong answer is to buy another heavy uh, pointed solution that you need to log into and then you have 50 different tabs in your web browser open. We think the right solution is to have that elegantly consolidated into a, a beautiful medium where people are working and prefer to work as a human. And that just requires education, it requires awareness. And so I think if we were to do it again, maybe we could have pulled dedicated sales and marketing functions forward a little bit earlier in the life cycle of our company. Very cool. Then I really appreciate you sharing uh, some background about troops, what you guys are, which problem you're solving, how you're growing and how you're sort of you personally as a founder have been sort of brought the company to where it's at today. So thanks a lot for taking the time for the interview today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Lucas.